Silicon Valley Bank SVB, was once considered the go-to bank for startups and innovative businesses in the tech industry. However, in the early 2000s, the bank suffered a significant collapse that left many wondering what went wrong. There were several reasons behind SVB's collapse, and this essay will explore them in detail. Firstly, the bank's lending practices were a major contributing factor to its collapse. SVB was known for its willingness to lend money to startups and businesses in the tech industry, even those that were not yet profitable. This led to the bank taking on a significant amount of risk, and when the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s, many of the bank's borrowers were unable to repay their loans. This left SVB with a significant amount of bad debt, which ultimately led to its collapse. Secondly, SVB's expansion into other industries was also a factor in its collapse. The bank had traditionally focused on the tech industry, but in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it began to expand into other industries, such as healthcare and entertainment. This expansion led to the bank taking on even more risk, as it was lending to businesses in industries it was less familiar with. Thirdly, SVB's leadership was also a factor in its collapse. The bank's CEO at the time, Ken Wilcox, had a vision of turning SVB into a global financial institution. However, this vision led to the bank taking on even more risk, as it sought to expand into international markets. Ken Wilcox, who served as the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank from 2000 to 2011, had a vision of transforming the bank into a global financial institution. Under his leadership, the bank embarked on an ambitious expansion plan, seeking to establish a presence in key international markets. This was part of Wilcox's broader strategy of diversifying the bank's portfolio and reducing its reliance on the tech industry, which he saw as a potential risk. To achieve this vision, SVB opened offices in several countries, including the United Kingdom, Israel, China, and India, among others. The bank also made several acquisitions, including the UK-based West LB Panmure and Boston's Alliant Bank. These acquisitions were intended to help SVB expand its reach and diversify its offerings, by adding new products and services to its portfolio. However, this expansion came at a cost. The bank was taking on more risk than ever before, as it ventured into unfamiliar markets and industries. The global financial crisis of 2008 further exacerbated the bank's challenges, as it struggled to manage the increasing amounts of bad debt on its balance sheet. Ultimately, SVB was forced to retrench, closing several of its international offices and refocusing on its core business in the tech industry. Despite the challenges that came with his ambitious vision, Ken Wilcox remains a respected figure in the banking industry. He is credited with transforming SVB from a small regional bank into a leading financial institution, and his legacy can still be seen in the bank's continued focus on innovation and technology. This expansion ultimately proved to be too much for the bank to handle, and it was forced to retrench and focus on its core business in the tech industry. In conclusion, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank was due to a combination of factors, including its lending practices, expansion into other industries, and leadership. While the bank was once a shining example of financial innovation, its collapse serves as a cautionary tale of the dangers of taking on too much risk in the pursuit of growth.